All right, my man, this is part two of our interview. I want you to state your name. Let them know you're on Nickabelly TV. Hello, my name is Tom Jones Jr., and I'm on Nickabelly TV. All right, man, now we're going to get it in. Now, we're going to talk about a different era concerning um, Knicks basketball. Gotcha. Uh, let's talk about the Patrick Ewing era. All right. You familiar with that? Patrick Ewing came in the 80s. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Patrick <laughs> Ewing came in the 80s. Right. The first time that the Knicks ever got a first round draft choice back in the day. He was a first round draft choice. Okay. Came out of Georgetown. All right. Had just won the championship that year. Okay. I got you, boss, because you're doing it. Just came out of Georgetown, yeah, he won the championship. The first time I saw him, they brought him to NCNA, which is uh, City College. People were very kind of mean for him because they never seen him play. They was calling him Monkey. It was called a Patrick Ewing the Monkey. A Monkey. First time. In City College. City College. Around here in Hull. Yeah, 135th Street in Amsterdam. Okay. And I was like, wow, they didn't even get it, buddy. You haven't even seen him play in the NBA. Okay. That year, he proved himself. Wow. Which I mean by he proved himself, the people recognize him as this is a 7 2 center that shoots like a guard, mm. plays defense. Mm. Run back up and down the court. Patrick Ewing was a great center. Okay. Uh, he took the Knicks places that you would never think they would go after you saw the old Knicks. They built around Patrick Ewing. They got other players to, as long as Patrick Ewing. But to me, he was one of the greatest centers that I've ever seen in the league. You like him over Willis Reed? No. No? I'm, I'm old school, so I, I'm going to stick with we. But if I had to name two of the Knicks' best centers, it would be Patrick Ewing and Willis Reed. That, that's the two best centers I ever seen on the Knicks. What about Bernard King? Bernard King was a forward. Oh, excuse me. Power Nicobelli. forward. Power forward. Grand, grandmama now. They okay. call him. He no, no, no. That was Larry Johnson. They call him Grandmama. Larry Johnson. That's what you're talking about, right? No, I said Bernard King. Oh, the, the, the King brothers. They from New York. Yeah, wasn't he a Bernard, center? No. Bernard King was a power forward. Okay. Shooting power forward. Okay. His brother was Albert King, who played for the Nets. So they would always see each other. Bernard was on the Knicks, and he was on the Nets. Okay. They came out of Brooklyn. You like the Bernard Kings game? Yeah. Yeah. Loved it. Bernard King is one of the players that in the holiday season, his thumbs was broken one time. He hit 52 back-to-back -back games with broken thumbs. Bernard King. Bernard King. Wow. On the Knicks. On the Knicks. Back-to-back. -back. Hit him one night, and then he hit him again the next night. His thumbs is messed up now. Okay, but he did his thing. Also, the Knicks did him dirty. They let him go because they thought he was washed up. Sent him to Washington. He got the player of the year. The comeback player of the year. On oh, the Knicks, too. Bust the Knicks ass. He had a little, the Knicks ass. He had a little vendetta, See, right? One thing the Knicks would, would always do, if they let one of their players go, and he go to another team and he become a star, that's a target for the Knicks. That player would usually come back and haunt the Knicks. Okay. Because, yo, I was on the team and you let me go somewhere else. I became a superstar on their team, so I'm going to burn you. All right, all right. <laughs> I see that, and that's what's going on today, man. Still, get, ready, get ready for this era. Carmelo is so now on Houston. He's going to haunt the Knicks. Think so? Yes. He still got game. He still got game. I hope you're wrong on that. Man, I wish Carmelo Anthony success. I wanted him to get a ring before he retired, at least. Okay. You know, like Patrick. Patrick, they got so close. And then the Knicks did the same thing to Patrick. Oh, it's time for you to go. And he sent them, you know, to, to Seattle. The, yeah, yeah. They, they, they shitted on Pat. I ain't like that. Let that man retire as a Nick. He deserved it. I'm going to mention the name on, on the Knicks player. It's Xavier McDaniel. Oh! Talk about the X-Men. Talk to me. From him being in Seattle, and then when he came to the Knicks, he was a threat. 
You see, because look, he's playing out west. Now he's playing in the east. And as I was coming up watching the Knicks, the floor map is that the west don't play no defense and the east does. So McDaniel Daniel was that kind of a player. Score at will, but also can stop you at will. Yeah, I heard he had play his heart, man. Take it from him. I heard he had Pippen's heart in particular. Certain players, he just get all geared up to play them. You know, Xavier McDaniel was outstanding. Another guy that could play two or three positions. Xavier McDaniel, husky, tough, defender. Don't back down. Didn't back down for the players or the refs. It was never a cry, baby. He get hit, he take it. Just jump up and take it. But when you go back down, he gonna get you. <laughs> <laughs> Moving right along. Let's talk about um, John Starks. Oh, dude, I love John Starks. Right. Because this is a guy that wasn't an outstanding college player. This guy packed bags in the supermarket by going to a little media college. The Knicks gave him a chance, and he excelled. He was one of the people there that make that that make other players look better around him. Right. He had heart. Okay. When I say he had heart, if anybody's in my area, we remember he was one of the only players to dunk on Jordan in the championship. In the playoffs. Oh, I was about to say that, yeah, playoffs. Not to say, like, playoffs, sorry. He dunked on Jordan in the playoffs. And mind you now, he was not that big, not that tall. You look at John Stark like a little mediocre player, but he, he would shoot you down, and he was not scared to play defense. And hey, you know what? Speaking of defense, if I'm not mistaken, I think Michael Jordan credit him as being one of the most – Defensive players. players on, and when they asked John, how I many, you know, John had a couple of players that were finished, but he said John starts always game trouble. Got him good. Yeah, he said, you say he goes somewhere, he said John stops was like a pest. He go this way, he's there. You go that way, he's there. John Starks would stay on you. Okay. You know, heart of a player. Uh, Anthony Mason. Oh, the animal. <laughs> He's no longer with us, man. I, I, I miss him because I watched that brother play from the Rucker up in Harlem to where the Knicks took him and another bad defender. You know, the Knicks have had some bad defenders, but Anthony Mason just, you know, they, you have to credit him with just he made his team look good. If they give him an assignment, he followed through on it. That's all I love about the animal. Charles Oakley. Oh, Oak Tree. Talk to me, baby. The Knicks got him from Oak Chicago. Oak Man will fuck you up, too. Oak Man was the kind of player, like, he, he looked forward to playing you. And he played you. He didn't care if you pushed him. He aggravates you. He was the kind of player, Oak Man was the kind of player that he loved a challenge. Right. And defense. See, these are the guys that made the Knicks look good. Right. Okay. Give me another one, bro. Oh, you ready, Els? Latrell Sprewell. Woo hoo hoo. Cornrow man, I call him. Yeah. All right, he got in a little trouble. Yeah, he choked, choked the, shit the out. coach. Yeah. <laughs> Knicks say, yo, we're gonna take a chance on him. Another player could score at will. They took two years from him. And I'm thinking them two years that you took from the spell, he would have been even more better of a player. Yeah, because he was out for two years behind right. that incident. They, they right? suspended him for two years. And when he got reinstated in the league, the Knicks said, yeah, we, they took him. He and got they, that bad boy in yeah, because and, the and look, Knicks was like. Oakley the, loved him because he was just like the Oak man. Yo, what, what you want to do, Oak? Remember, you were playing with the Animal. You got Charles Oakley. You got John Starks. You got Patrick Ewing. Anthony you, you got Mason. A, Anthony Mason. You got, you, got, you got a house. Okay. Now, we're going to talk about today's Knicks. Okay. Chris Pazingas. 
Young player, you got to give him a chance. You got to give him a chance. Uh, for a big man, he can shoot. He can handle the ball. Just got to get a little more experience. And I think this injury that he, he's going through now, when he come back, is going to make him even better if the Knicks can learn to build around that because that's their future star. Okay. Zingers. I love him. Young kid. He's young. Right. Yeah, we got Coach Fisdale now. Yeah, he, and he know how to handle. You got to get coaches that know how to handle young players. Right. With the attitude and stuff and all of this. If you don't have a coach that can do that, they're just going to walk right over you. All right. Trey Burke. Oh, listen. Young kid. They call him the baby AI, you know. He got a shot, and he's proving himself. You know, if you keep – the players, if the Knicks can keep the players they got now and keep them healthy, they got a shot. Burke is, a, is an eager player, and he's still in the learning process too, but he's good. Yeah, he came for the Utah Jazz. Yeah. Uh, I think he was the first round ninth pick. Yeah, ninth pick. And yeah. And they. 2013, if I'm not mistaken. That's it. You got your thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, I'm learning, man. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Nicovelli ain't the greatest info as far as I'm learning from my interviews, man. I learn from my research. I don't edit my video, so if I make a mistake, once I put it up, it is what it is. Yeah. My Nicovellians, they tear my ass up, but it's all love, man. And I learn from people in the comments and all that. So I'm never one to come across like I know it all. Right. The but Knicks, I am that in the, the, the creator of this channel. I'm going to blow this shit up. If man. the Knicks, they haven't had much success as a coach, as coaches, mm -hmm. you know. But they seem like they got a guy now that he's going to work with the people he got instead of criticizing them. Right. You know, oh, he ain't this, or he ain't, and then all oh, letting them go. Work with them. Talk to me about the new draft picks. Are you familiar with Kevin Knox, Mitchell Oh, Robinson? my God. Talk to me about Kevin Knox. Let me tell you something. That was the best pick that I've seen in a long time that the Knicks got because I've been watching the summer league. This kid is proving his point. They, the Knicks, Knicks did good to take him. He's a future superstar to me. And if if I'm hoping, I hope, you know, when Bazingas come back and they put this guy, put this team together, he's gonna start. He's gonna start. He's proving himself as a big man. I'm coming up, you got lazy big men. Kevin Nash plays both ends of the court. Right. And you haven't seen a big man do that in a long time. And that's what Pazingas does too. Right. They pull, when you got big men that play both ends of the court, that makes your whole team better. All right. Frank Nilakina. Young kid, another young kid. He catch a lot of slack because he don't put up a lot of numbers. Right. But he but, but his defense game is impeccable. Defense man. is good and assists. Right. Remember, assist counts.